part of the eugenics movement. They had to, you know, el eliminate or do great damage to those populations. And of course, in addition to the Holocaust, you had about two million Catholic Polish people uh, slaughtered in World War II uh, as well. So these were considered dysgenic people. Uh, they were to be limited. And so what you had was a very, very supportive type of elite, uh, elitist type people, FDR. Franklin Roosevelt uh, was one of these. At the end of the war, you'll find this in the private papers of uh, Secretary of State uh, Stettinius. There was Stettinius, 1945. And he's present with FDR, and he's asking FDR, who's about to meet with the king of Saudi Arabia, this Saud family, if FDR is going to uh, give them anything for this cooperation that we want. And FDR flat out says, well, uh, I might just give him our, meaning American, six million Jews. Yeah, you know, that, that figure isn't accidental. He's, I might just give him our six million Jews. Now remember, this is the end of the war after, you know, what Hitler has been doing. And so what you, what you find happening is that in, during the late part of the war, there's an effort to establish the, the nation of Israel. And the, the way that happened was the power elite members, like David Rockefeller works with the communists. He loves uh, Fidel Castro, Chairman Mao in China. But Nelson Rockefeller is the one who worked with the Nazis. And he basically was in charge of Latin America for us and worked with Alan Dulles. And what happened was uh, Alan and John Foster Dulles' sister, Eleanor Dulles, had married a Jewish person who was uh, connected with the Zionists. And she found out about what Nelson was doing. She gave the papers to the Zionists, and they confronted Nelson Rockefeller and said, look what we got on you. And Nelson said, okay, you got the goods on me. You got a choice. You can have revenge or I can deliver the Latin American bloc so that you can have the uh, nation of Israel established, and that's what they did. And that's why Israel got passage uh, through the U.N. Now, what happened was after the war, you had a statement. This is what the power elite does, uh, and it was talking about the communist dynamics. Secretary of State Dean Rusk under JFK had a report uh, given to him by Lincoln Bloomfield, and it said if the communist dynamic were greatly abated, the West would lose whatever incentive it has for world government. So you had to have that tension. So in terms of Israel today, what's going on is the power elite's doing the same thing. If the radical Islamic dynamic were greatly abated, Israel would lose whatever incentive it has for world government. So you have to promote this radical Islamic movement going on today, the Muslim Brotherhood, to coerce and put pressure, physical pressure, security pressure, in addition to economic pressure, on the nation of Israel. What happened was that the Muslim Brotherhood, when it was founded in 1928, as I said, was allied with al Husseini and the Nazis. And through the 1930s, what you had is the beginning of various movements, offshoots of that. Hamas is an offshoot of that, of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, Hezbollah is. Al-Qaeda is. They're offshoots of these, and they all bring pressure, whether they're in Iran or Egypt or whatever, against Israel. And I mentioned, uh, I mentioned that before. But uh, what you have in, in pressuring Israel is uh, a, if you look at it, it's a really contradiction. On the one hand, we, the Americans, say we're at war with al-Qaeda. You know, we're at war with the war on terrorism uh, worldwide against al-Qaeda. But look at what we're doing in Libya. The Muslim Brotherhood, and especially a lot of members of al-Qaeda, and a lot of al-Qaeda members from Libya went to Iraq, as well as the KLA, Kosovo Liberation Army, and so forth, were helped. We're actually, by helping these rebels, as we call them in Libya, we're helping al-Qaeda, even though we're supposed to be at war with them uh, globally. And so this will all be used uh, to pressure Israel to do what? What they're trying to do is form regional arrangements. Israel is being coerced into this a regional arrangement. They'll call it the Mediterranean Union or the Middle Eastern Union. And they'll be given a carrot and a stick. You know, you cooperate, you'll get into certain loans and foreign investments. You don't, and you won't, and you'll be isolated. So Israel is being pressured to do that. Why? Because what, what the power elite is doing is linking up regional arrangements. Uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski was an advisor to President Jimmy Carter. He was also the first director of David Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission. He was national security advisor to Jimmy Carter. Well, after that, he, went, uh, he has a book that came out in 1997 called The Grand Chessboard. And I have a tape of him in 1995 at Gorbachev's first State of the World Forum here in San Francisco. And in there, Brzezinski, who's an advisor, to Obama, an advisor to President Obama today, he said, we're not going to get to world government through one quick leap. 
what we'll do is use regional arrangements first, regional. So what they want to do is a region uh, developed there, an economic region, they'll call it first. They'll link that up with the European Union, with NAFTA, with the African Union, with ASEAN, and so forth. So that's what's, uh, that's what's going on today. And the whole process is sort of uh, surround Israel and the British, as I said, Lord Milner was executing this plan for Cecil Rhodes. And you will actually find uh, last year, 2010, a Lord James of Blackheath, Lord James, and he has a statement in Hansard saying that he has funded these North African terrorists. And he says, if you try and come after me, talk to the Bank of England because they were supporting me in this. So they actually support these people in, in doing this. And what they will do is the plan, there's what's called a plan. And the plan is that we will have, by 2018, a world currency. That's why we're hammering the middle class today, all of this debt, 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 more debt we're incurring, the devaluation of the dollar through inflation, because the plan, and you can see uh, on the cover of The Economist magazine for January 9th of 1988, 88, that it'll say pencil in the Phoenix, that'll be the name of it, for 2018. Now, that's 30 years in advance, from 1988 to 2018, but I include in the book two references last year by foreign uh, financial ministers saying, yep, the, the tra we're still on track for 2018 for the world currency uh, called the Phoenix. And so that'll be the, the next stage on the way to this uh, world, uh, world government, and Israel, of course, and America have to be coerced into going along with this. Well, Dr. Cuddy, that's been a tremendous explanation. I remember Mr. Omer, and I believe it was in the summer of 2006, and you spoke about the war coming to a screeching halt, and I wondered if money was involved in that, and certainly, as you pointed out, it really was, and I love your uh, description of NATO as a peacekeeping surrogate for the new world order. Wow, we're, we're bombing Libya. Uh, it looks like this is exactly what is happening. But, you know, Dr. Cuddy, there have been some really unusual developments in America over the last few Few years we have uh, for example the most pro-abortion minded president that we've ever had President Obama's pushing same-sex marriage gays in the military I was reading that the American Psychiatric Association wants to destigmatize pedophilia how do you see the power elite using these changing definitions of marriage the destruction of the home attacks on the family how does this all tie in with their agenda well, it's multifaceted. It's not just a political or economic agenda. They they have to uh, control everything, including uh, religion and so on. So when you talk about the American Psychiatric Association, I have put in one of my other books, which uh, you have published, a quote from 1940, and it's in the respected journal Mental Health. It's by a John Rawlings Reese. And he's saying they're basically going to take over everything in terms of the psychiatrists and psychology to create this new world order as H.G. Uh, Wells, the Fabian socialist who is an agent of the power elite, wrote in his book in 1939. And he, that was the title of it, The New World Order. And in there, uh, John Rawlings Reese said, we have made a useful attack. He used that word, a useful attack on two professions, that is the uh, profession uh, area of religion and education. And so they, they see religion and education as something which they have to take over, undermine, control. And as I mentioned, the Rockefellers have been uh, very, very heavily into this. And I, uh, I mentioned a 1959 book called Mid-Century Challenge, uh, America Challenge, by the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. And in there, this, they use the term, and it's 1959, they use that term, New World Order. We have, we have to develop a new world order, and the task has fallen to us. And it says this new world order will involve not only politics and economics and so forth, but the first thing they put in there, the first thing they put on in there is spiritual. They have to control the spiritual aspect. And in case you think that's sort of odd, uh, of course, I mentioned David Rockefeller set up the Trilateral Commission in 1973. And six years later, 1979, Senator Barry Goldwater wrote his uh, autobiography called With No Apologies. And he said the purpose of the Trilateral Commission is to, among other things, gain ecclesiastical control. Not just politics, not just economics, but ecclesiastical control. So the, the religious aspect of this is very important, and they would set up institutions, like the World Health Organization was an institution set up by these people, and the first individual who was head of it was a, a psychiatrist, a British-Canadian uh, psychiatrist called Brock Chisholm, Brock Chisholm, and he wrote uh, in the journal Psychiatry, the February issue 1946, that what they have to do is uh, 
uh, stop all this lecturing, this sermonizing of parents and preachers and priests and so forth about the concept of right and wrong. We have to do away with this concept of right and wrong so that we can uh, train these children to accept this new mentality. We, we call it secular humanism now. They've had different names for it over the years. But uh, basically it's godless. And that's what they wanted to develop. And so they had to get rid of prayer in the schools, which they did, but they still kept teaching values in the schools in the late, uh, in the late 60s. And so uh, what they did was the uh, student became an autonomous moral decision maker, uh, deciding what's right or wrong for me based on, uh, based on the situation, uh, moral relativism uh, through uh, situation ethics. And so it's very important that they establish this because, as Alice Bailey said, who's the a leading occultist of the 20th century, first half of the 20th century, her works were first published by Lucifer Publishing. She called it the plan, uh, is what she called it. In the 1930s, she said, well, the plan will be coming to fruition, taking rapid shape by the year 2025, is what she said the plan uh, would, would uh, entail. And, of course, uh, what she meant as a Luciferian was uh, what, uh, what Lucifer, the, the serpent, did with Eve, uh, the, the serpent didn't tell Eve, God says, do this, you do the opposite. He used values clarification to get, did God really mean, and so forth, to change the locus of control from God. Previously, Eve uh, said, well, if God said, do it or don't do it, I'll do it or not do it. But once he got Eve thinking uh, to herself, you know, rationalizing, looking at this as to what's good for her and the circumstances, what she, did, what she wanted to do, then Eve, in effect, was becoming her own God, the opposite of the God of the Bible. Bible. And so that's what they're doing in the public schools today. So the, this plan on the part of the power elite is not just for a world economy, not just for a world government, but for a one world religion. And that's important uh, among the Muslims as well, because you have what they'll do is they'll use all Muslims, uh, radical Muslims, to coerce Israel. But then what they want to do is play the Sunnis against the Shiites. You have the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, they're Sunni. You have uh, opposing them in Iraq and primarily in Iran, the Shiites. And they will play them against each other. They'll, you know, fight amongst each other and they'll weary, become weary. And then they'll start saying, this, what do we have in common? What do we all have in common? And so that will be the basis of this new world religion that they want. Is what, what do we all have in common? Of course, Jesus Christ isn't in common, so he's gone. Well, Dr. Cuddy, we appreciate you very much. I know our listeners do. And 